it actually shows that the state minimum wage in Massachusetts is $15 an hour, which is wholly inadequate. But you need to make $44.84 an hour, almost $45 an hour, which is three times the minimum wage to in order to afford a two-bedroom apartment. You have to work 98 hours to afford a modest one-bedroom apartment at $15 an hour. Nobody has time for that. And so while the $32.50 an hour is a step in the right direction, it is wholly inadequate to, for anybody to still live. Because you will still need a second job in order to be able to afford a two-bedroom apartment in Massachusetts. Oh, my goodness. This is actually some pretty promising news out of Massachusetts. Let's get into this story about Uber and Lyft. Drivers able to make $32.50 per hour now? Hmm, let's get into this. I am quite excited for this story. Let's share this article here. So it says Uber and Lyft agreed to pay drivers $32.50 per hour in Massachusetts settlement. So it says here, Drivers for Uber and Lyft will earn a minimum pay standard of $32.50 per hour under a settlement announced Thursday by Massachusetts Attorney General Andrea Campbell and a deal that also includes a suite of benefits and protections. The two companies will also be required to pay a combined $175 million to the state to resolve allegations that the companies violated Massachusetts wage and hour laws, a substantial majority of which will be distributed to current and former drivers. Campbell said the settlement resolves her office's years long litigation against the two companies and stops the threat of their attempted to rewrite state employment law by a proposed 2024 ballot initiative. That question would have resulted in drivers receiving inadequate protections and an earning state standard that would not guarantee minimum wage, she said. Quote, for years, these companies have underpaid their drivers and denied them basic benefits, end quote. Uh, she said today's agreement holds Uber and Lyft accountable and provides the drivers for, for the very first time in Massachusetts guaranteed minimum pay, paid sick leave, occupational accident insurance, and health care stipends. So I think, ooh, hang on. I think that this is a promising story. Um, I will not claim absolute victory over this because I think more can be done for workers, especially for these drivers of rideshare companies. But I do think it's a step in the right, the right direction, especially for workers, because they need to be able to uh, have a living wage so that they can be able to afford to make enough money to feed and house and clothe their families. And so these companies, these corporations are really in the extracting game, extracting as much from their drivers as they possibly can to keep uh, their shareholders happy. When in reality, it is the workers that make this company run. If these drivers were to delete the apps and stop driving overall, where would Uber and Lyft be? No, well, right? And so that's why I think this is important. And they know this too. Let's continue. So it says Democratic Governor Moore Healy said this, this settlement delivers historic wages and benefits to right the wrongs of the past and ensure drivers are paid fairly going forward. And the statement Lyft said that the agreement involves a lawsuit that recently went to trial and avoids the need for the ballot initiative campaign this November. It says, more importantly, it is a major victory in a multi-year campaign by Bay State drivers to secure their rights to remain independent while gaining access to new benefits. Uber also released a statement calling the agreement an ex an example of what independent flexible work with dignity should look like in the 21st century. Now, here's why I say it's a step in the right direction, because if Uber is praising it, I'm scratching my head. I'm like, what you so happy about? See, 
This is why I think Uber drivers should still be cautious because they're still considered independent contractors. So I, I, this is why I say take it with a grain of salt because they still aren't getting what I believe that workers should get. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys why in a second. So, um, this says the companies were pushing a ballot question that would classify drivers as independent contractors eligible for some benefits. But Campbell said the settlement stops at the threat of ballot question. A competing ballot question seeks to give drivers the right to unionize in Massachusetts. Drivers will now earn one hour sick pay for every 30 hours worked up to a maximum of 40 hours per year. That's basically a week, a week's work of sick pay. I'm going to be honest with you. I honestly don't think that's enough. To me, sick pay should be at least 80 hours. Because when you're sick, for those of us who are grown grown people, a week, you're just getting through half of it. I think you should at least have two weeks, at least. Right? 40 hours? No, nah, that's not enough. I think it should be 80 at the very least. So I'm not satisfied with that. I'm going to be real with you. Let's continue. It says, as part of the agreement, Uber and Lyft must update their driver applications so drivers are able to view and claim their sick leave directly on the app. Drivers will also receive a stipend to buy into the state's fit, paid family and medical leave program. Under the deal, Uber and Lyft will also allow drivers to pull together their hours driving for the two companies to obtain access to health insurance stipend. Anyone who drives for more than 15 hours per week for either both company for either or both companies will be able to earn health insurance stipend to pay for plan on Massachusetts Health Connector. Here's another thing. As somebody that believes that we should have a nationalized healthcare system, I think that no matter no amount of hours you should be able to work, you should have you should have healthcare no matter how many hours you work. I don't care if it's under 15 hours, you should have healthcare. It should not be, oh, well, you have to work this minimum amount of hours in order to receive no, 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 no. Our healthcare should not be tied to our jobs. This is why I said I'm just, it's in the right direction. So drivers will be eligible for occupational accident insurance paid by the companies for up to $1 million in coverage for work-related injuries. The agreement also requires the companies to provide drivers with key information about the length of trip, the destination, and expected earnings before they are expected to accept a ride. I mean, that that's like, duh. That should have been there in the first place. As the companies are barred from discriminating against drivers based on race, religion, national origins, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, disability, or other protected identities, and can't retaliate against drivers who have filed a complaint about the companies with the attorney general's office. That's also a duh position. The deal also requires companies to provide drivers an app chat support with a live person in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French, and must provide drivers with information about why they have been deactivated and create an appeals process. So I think, you know, that is all good. I think they can go further. I think it should go further. And I'm going to show you guys why. So in Massachusetts, that $32.50 per hour is actually not good enough to survive in Massachusetts. Why? 
And the out of reach from the National Low Income Housing Coalition, Massachusetts is actually the second most expensive state in the United States, according to the 2024 out of reach map. You have to make at least $44.84 an hour required to afford a two bedroom rental home. So if you go into more info, it actually shows that the state minimum wage in Massachusetts is $15 an hour, which is wholly inadequate. But you need to make $44.84 an hour, almost $45 an hour, which is three times the minimum wage to in order to afford a two-bedroom apartment. You have to work 98 hours to afford a modest one-bedroom apartment at $15 an hour. Nobody has time for that. And so while the $32.50 an hour is a step in the right direction, it is wholly inadequate to, for anybody to still live. Because you will still need a second job in order to be able to afford a two-bedroom apartment in Massachusetts. So while I say it's a step in the right direction, it has not benefited the drivers adequately in my fully in my honest opinion now this is also me advocating for why don't we have a better public transit system for people to get around because also it's going to be more expensive to go via uber and lyft because of course Who's going to absorb that cost to get around on Uber and Lyft in Massachusetts? The company's not going to absorb that. It's going to be passed on to you, the consumer. Even though the shareholders, they could receive a little less. The CEOs, they could receive a little less. But they're not going to do that. So they're going to pass that on to you. And this is why I think public transportation really needs to be taken out of private hands and put into the hands of the public. This is why we need more mass public transit. This needs to happen in places like here in Florida. It is wholly inadequate. Here in Orlando, our public buses will stop running at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, maybe. At the most? Meanwhile, you got places here that are open 24 hours. So many people aren't leaving the bars and clubs who work there, the bartenders, the restaurant workers, the line cooks and all that. We're not leaving out until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning to take public transportation to get home. And then we have to spend extra money to take an Uber or a Lyft, which is becoming just as expensive as taking a taxi? And let's look at the most expensive areas, right? Now, the average uh, supplemental security income for people who are maybe disabled is $1,057. That's ridiculous. I'm trying to look for the most expensive areas. Um, oh, you know what? I can probably look at that through what Roger sent me. Hang on. Uh, I know Roger sent me the, he sent me the screenshots for that. Hang on. All right. So
Let's go here. Okay. So let me share this here to show the most expensive areas as well. Thanks a lot for this, Roger. So the most expensive areas are Boston, Cambridge, Quincy. So you need to make $54.37 an hour. So if you're living in Boston, you're screwed. Even if you're an Uber driver making $32.50 an hour, you're still screwed. Nantucket, you need to make $48.58. Easton, uh, Rainham is $48.08. Dukes County is $41.46. And Barnstable town is $40.04 an hour. Still wholly inadequate in the state. So this is why I say it's a step in the right direction, but it just doesn't go far enough. This is why I, you know, I reflect on people like view, viewer Roger Meadows says, we need a ride. If we're going to have ride share companies, then it needs to be worker owned and operated. And this means that, you know, you can either try to start one or, for instance, right of first refusal, have a law like that that's established so that the workers actually have the ability to purchase the company and become worker owners. Um if say Uber or Lyft decided to sell the company, you know, of course it is public, I think it's publicly traded. So, but yes. So I think that's one of the reasons why I think I, this is why I call it a promising story. Is it a big victory? <sighs> eh. I'm kind of on the fence about if it's a big victory, you know? Um, so that's why, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, on the fence on it. Um, let me take a look at this here too. So let me share this with you guys. Because ultimately, I don't think they would ever want to sell because, of course, it's a lot of money. So this is from Uber. This is their stock ownership. Top institutional holders. Well, look at there. Vanguard owns 8.2%. BlackRock owns 6.69%. Morgan Stanley, State Street, another big one. So, of course, you know, of course, these companies are owned by the private equity and these big companies that really own a piece of everything. So, yeah, this is why it is important to get to wrestle these type of companies out of the hands of these are the people who actually own our country. They own our government. It's not necessarily the president. It's not Congress. It's not the Supreme Court. There are people who own them. And these people, as well as the big banks and the central banks, are the ones that own our government. They have our government by the throat. It's the same thing with Lyft. Lyft is no different. Let's go to Lyft. Here's the stock ownership, top institutional holders. Number two is Vanguard. Then you have BlackRock. State Street's also in this. So there's really not much of a difference. They own both. So this is why... It is important to do what we can to change the system. 
because yeah, they'll they'll give the drivers an inch, but then they'll take that inch back. So never be satisfied until the workers actually own it. I'm happy for the workers that they're able to get a little bit more. But there's a lot more work to do. So keep fighting. And go ahead and unionize, but try to work for worker ownership over, over, over that. So, yeah. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.